this patient has probable left uh, or, or, or right lateral canalithiasis. We are not sure. She has uh, no significant nystagmus in neutral gaze. We're going to turn her head to the left side and assume the left Dix-Hall pike position. Oh, and there's quite a strong left beat lateral nystagmus. This is geotropic. Let's see how long that goes before it stops. So we have established that there's likely lateral canal disease. It seems to be tapering now. This is likely canal lithiasis, but we do not know the side. Now we're going to start the supine roll test directly. Turn your head all the way to the right side. All the way to the right. Very good. And we'll compare the intensity. This seems to be a more robust response on the right. Quite a bit more pronounced than on the left but we can never really be sure until we compare the second and third responses. The first response may not be reliable. That's come to a stop. Now turn your head back to the left. And that is a very strong response. We really have a lot of movement now. Strong but rather brief. Now turn your head back to the right. And all the way over. And that is a very strong response. It is so strong that there's some double beating. The eye can't even reset before it goes back to the right. I think that the response on the right side may be stronger. We'll turn back to the left again. No, the left is unequivocally stronger. So there's no question. I think in this case, this is a left lateral canal lithiasis. So the supine roll test tells us to roll from this left side to the right side to clear the left lateral canal. This is a good example of how difficult it can be to compare the amplitude of these responses and how you have to continue to repeat the supine roll test to make a judgment.